Okay, great. Uh, so uh, today my presentation topic is uh, stability analysis and operation control of power electronized power systems. And uh, before I start, I just uh, uh, want to um, acknowledge uh, my PhD student, um, Mr. J.K. Luo. So today's uh, presentation actually is part of his PhD work. So, and if you have further interest in uh, in my research work, you can uh, refer to uh, you know the web link below. So this is our uh, you know research group uh, web link. Okay. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So I think uh, actually yesterday, Professor Xu has already uh, kind of introduced our university. So for this part, I'm just gonna quickly go through. Uh, so you can see some beautiful pictures of uh, our university. Uh, so we are located in the center of Hong Kong. And uh, uh, yeah, so we have eight faculties and schools, yeah. So uh, these are some of our research uh, facilities. So every year, actually, we got a uh, uh, quite a lot of donation from the government to build up the you know the re research institute. And recently, actually, we built up uh, uh, two research institutes. One is the smart energy; the other one is in the area of smart cities. And here again, uh, there are uh, some more uh, pictures uh, of our campus. So you might notice this one, right? This one on the uh, top right hand side. So this is a, a called the uh, the Jockey Club Innovation Tower, and this building actually is uh, quite unique. If you come to visit our campus, it looks quite unique, and it was actually designed by the Pulitzer Prize winning architect Zaha Hadid, and unfortunately, actually, uh, she passed away in twenty sixteen, I think. And this building is her first and also the permanent uh, work in Hong Kong. Um, and al also you can see this one. This one actually is a hotel. It's a hotel icon. It's owned by our university. And this hotel is ranked third in Hong Kong and top 25 in China. It's a five-star uh, hotel. So if you come to visit Hong Kong uh, sometime, you can actually visit this uh, hotel. So after we... After we, uh, you know, build this uh, hotel, our, uh, you know, the hotel management and the tourist, uh, I mean, the subject of the, uh, become the uh, the top uh, in the world. So here are some in, uh, is some information about our department. So we have uh, uh, an initiative, uh, okay, in smart grid and future mobility, and we have. Uh, uh, you know, some you know areas which is related to this uh, you know, initiative, like in uh, you know, power system, battery uh, material technology, sensors, sensing networks, system condition, and monitoring, transportation system, communication, and internet, machine and drives. So this is the general profile of our uh, department. So we are aiming, you know, for the, you know, the smart city, uh, I mean, for Hong Kong, uh, you know, the initiative. And uh, uh, here is the, uh, the, the, the lab, uh, you know, in the area of a power system and smart grid. So we have two uh, main labs, okay, in our department uh, related to power system and smart grid. So one is the power system research lab. So we have the real-time simulator uh, in this lab. And also we have a, a smart microgrid research lab. So we actually installed or uh, integrated some uh, renewable energies and also the energy management system uh, in this lab. Okay, so it comes to uh, the topic today. So, uh, so first I would like to give you some uh, background about uh, you know, the, the power grids. Uh, I mean, uh, in the world, uh, in the modern uh, society. So in order to uh, significantly slow global um, warming and uh, eliminate air pollution uh, mortality in 139 countries, an energy roadmap has been developed. This plans call for electrifying all energy sectors, including transportation, heating and cooling, 
industry, agriculture, forestry, and fishing, etc., and providing the electricity with 100% renewable energy, such as wind, water, and solar power. So fully, uh, in fully, uh, you know, implementing the roadmap by 2050 can avoid. This is like a, you know estimated figure, 1.5 degree global warming, and millions of deaths from air pollution annually, and it can also create a 24.3 million net new long-term and full-time jobs. It can also reduce the energy cost to society, reduce the power requirement uh, by 42.5 percent. Um, so. Uh, with all these targets and the roadmap being planned, uh, there is a certain trend uh, to have a fast increasing renewable share in the future power generation. Uh, as you may know, the development of a power electronics technology has laid a solid foundation for the integration of a renewable power generation. Uh, on the other hand, high penetration of renewables result in a power electronics dominated power system or so-called power electronized power system. So uh, in the future power grid, we can expect you know, two, uh, two features. Okay, so one is the high you know, renewable share and the other one is the high power electronics. So uh, unlike the, the traditional you know, synchronous uh, generator centered power system, the power electronics dominant system can have uh, a few uh, characteristics. Uh, firstly, is a complex coexistence coexist of uh, dynamics with different time scales. So you can see actually, uh, you know, different colors, uh, the curve here, like dash line or, you know, the solid line. Uh, actually, they represent different time scale, if you, if you uh, know. Uh, the second feature is uh, there's a wide range of uh, frequency coupling dynamics. So what I mean here is, uh, for different colors, you know, dynamics actually we have a certain you know coupling, uh, internal coupling. So it can be certainly expected that many new stability problems will be or are being introduced to the modern system operation. Okay. So in order to accommodate this significant change in the power system dynamics, the task force of IEEE PES Power System Dynamic Performance Committee has recently introduced two new stability classes and added them to the well-known stability definition and classification proposal early this century by Dr. Kunda. As a matter of fact, the first new category Resonance stability, which is here, uh, it is uh, well known as SSR or SSO issues, including the torsional and electrical resonance, has been there for, for a long time, which, however, was uh, excluded from the old stability classification in the electromechanical dynamics time scale. But more uh, so called the converter interface the generation are integrated. The dominant dynamics of the system are not restricted to electromechanical time scale anymore. So there is a need to add this category to make the stability classification more complete. The second new category here is related to the oscillation or resonance either between different uh, converter controls or between converter and a weak grid. Many sub-synchronous control interactions, so-called SSCI problems, are related to this new category. So different from the old categories, the two new categories are both related to oscillation or resonance uh, manifestation. Uh, so for more details, you can refer to the recent published uh, technical report, as well as uh, actually there's a paper uh, from the task force. Okay with the same name as, I suppose, that you can refer to. So recently, uh, the new types of stability issues happened for quite a few times. 
actually is quite often. So people tend to use the old understanding and concept to name the new incidents. For example, we you know, tend to name the series compensation related to stability, SSR, and we tend to, you know, to uh, probably name this non-series compensation you know, related to the uh, in the residence as SSO. However, the, the, cause, the causes and the mechanisms could be different. Although we name as a, you know, SSO or SSR, but uh, the mechanism behind uh, could be quite different. So here, actually, I, I list some of uh, the uh, very uh, you know, famous or well-known uh, events related to the new stability issues recently. So before this one, actually, there's, there was another one uh, very uh, well known, which is uh, you know in happened in Texas, ERCOT, in 2009. So there is uh, an SSR, but uh, it, actually it, it was uh, electrical uh, resonance. Okay, it caused the the defect wind farm trip, and also the core bar damage. Uh, so here, uh, you know, I list three. The first one is the you know in the North China. This SSR result in the defect uh, trips. Uh, it is an SSCI issue. Uh, if uh, you know based on the you know the previous new uh, proposed uh, stability uh, you know classification, it should belong to the resonance stability issue. So, uh, so if you look at the maximum, it is you know caused by the the, the negative re resistance, okay. So the next negative resistance uh, brought by the converter control uh, from the, the wind farm uh, caused this uh, incident. Um, and the interaction involves the converter control and a serious compensation. So it is an you know, resonant stability issue. So the second one uh, is this one in the middle. It happened in uh, in Xinjiang province uh, in China. Uh, this is a, a so-called SSO issue. It results in you know, the ultra HVDC and thermal power plant uh, chipped. Okay, uh, and it, it was an SSI, SSCI issue as well. Since the interaction mainly involves the in, a converter controller and the weak grid, so it is a, a converter driven stability issue. So we call that CDS here, is converter driven stability issue. And the third one is the, uh, the UK blackout in London, right, last year. Although it is mainly a frequency issue as reported, right? But, uh, you know, the trip of the, the horsey offshore wind farm is a key trigger, which is caused by the electrical resonance due to wind farm converter control system. And so it should be an SSCI issue, but uh, whether it is an, an you know, resonant stability or converter-driven stability, we do not know yet. So it's still under investigation. So among all these em emerging issues, we will uh, you know, exclusive look at the converter-driven stability uh, model, model resonance issue today. And uh, it is caused by the, you know, um, the power electronics uh, dominant system, you know, the especially integration of the power electronics. So uh, I think it uh, aligns with uh, you know today's topic. So next one, uh, we mainly use the you know the full converter based wind generation. So this is a typical you know uh, wind generation technology really uh, to investigate the mechanism and. Uh, uh, the mitigation options of uh, the model resonance between wind and a weak grid. So, it's you know the model resonance. This term here, right? Uh, it literally uh, means the integration of a wind generation will introduce a few, you know, wind generation associated oscillation mode. Uh, here we call them, you know, FOM, FOM. So this this is a, the wind generation related to the oscillation mode. So this FOMs may excite the severe resonance with the existing system oscillation modes. So it will, you know, excite the existing system oscillation mode. And here we use the electromechanical oscillation modes, which is, uh, you know, the 
EOM, EOM here as an example. Okay. So if you have uh, you know further you know question or interest, you can refer to this paper. So if you look at this uh, complex plane diagram, the oscillation mode or lambda eigenvalue, okay, without the little hat represent the open loop eigenvalue. So this one's without the, the little hat, okay. And the one with that, okay, um, represent the closed loop eigenvalue. So we have two different eigenvalues. One is so called you know, open loop, the other one is called closed loop. So later on, I, I will uh, actually introduce what's the difference between these two. So based on the diagram, it can be seen that the transition from open loop to closed loop can reflect the dynamic interaction between the wind system and the rest of the power system, right? We just uh, you know, defined the FOM actually is related to the dynamics of uh, wind system, right? And the EOM is the existing right, uh, the system oscillation mode. So for this particular case, the interaction might cause the system mode moving from the left half plane to right half plane and has lead to instability. Later, I will introduce other interaction conditions as well as a few prerequisites to make the interaction happen. So when model resonance between the wind and power grid happens, in our research, we mainly allocate the jobs to the wind generation. So we, we think it is uh, we we think it is the problem of the wind generation. Okay, and we have two reasons for this arrangement. The first is the root cause, the root cause, the root reason. Okay, the model resonance might be directly induced by the integration of wind generation owing to the improper parameter settings. So secondly, the model resonance not only jeopardizes uh, the damping of the power grid, but also affects the dynamic performance of the wind generation itself, which may incur the critical trip or as an damage, for example, the previous mentioned the crowbar damage, right? And has considerable economic loss of wind farms. So actually, there are more reasons for this, okay? For instance, the wind mode is easier to manipulate. We think it's uh, easier to adjust. But of course, if certain parameter sets or range can go through the hardware in the loop validation, it will be better. Okay, so that's, this is, a, you know, uh, these are the two reasons we try to you know, to uh, adjust the wind generation in order to you know, prevent this model resonance from happening. So, so following the you know, standard pr procedure, we can actually uh, derive the linearized model of wind generation system and the rest of power system respectively in order to analyze the, the model resonance. You can see here is a, you know, dynamic uh, model of the you know, PMSG, the permanent magnetic uh, synchronous generator, which is a part of, uh, of the wind generation, right? And this is the uh, you know, dynamic of a machine side converter control. So this is a machine side converter. So they can form a, a matrix, right? So this is uh, you know, the, the PMSG and the MSC. And also we have uh, you know, the uh, the dynamics of the DC capacitor, dynamics of a grid side converter control, uh, and also we have the PLL, right? And the dynamics of filter. So they form another you know, matrix here. I'm not gonna uh, you know, go into details. So if uh, you have interest, you can you know, refer to our recent published paper. Um, so, and then we can you know, uh, actually you know, uh, combine all of these measure it together so it become this you know the needleized model of the uh, we call a full converter of wind generator okay so this is a wind system so by using the same method we can uh, actually you know uh, build the uh, the system model right build system model so this is a linearized model 
of the you know of the system. So when we uh, derive the wind system model, it's treated as a current source, as most of renewable generations currently use the grid feeding converter. So they are not using the grid forming converter. So, so we can actually treat them as a current source. Okay. So that's why you can see, right? We have this delta i here, which is uh, the you know the variation of the current. So we treat the wind generation you know system as a you know current source. So up to now, the two uh, open loop uh, subsystem model with respect to each other is obtained. Uh, the basic load flow remains. Okay, so it doesn't affect the basic uh, load flow. The output of the wind ge power generation is input of the, the rest of the power system you look at here. So the output is the input. And here, the output of the rest power system is the input of, uh, of the, um, the wind power system. Okay, so if we integrate the two open loop subsystem to one closed loop system, the conventional system model is established. So in, in a moment, the two open loop subsystem will be employed to examine uh, the interaction mechanism. Okay, so, so you can refer to our paper actually to have a further look at this one. And in order to uh, fully character, uh, characterize all the conditions of the dynamic model interaction, we proposed a model superposition classification concept here. So in this classification, we not only look at the model resonance, so which is here, right, the red one. We also look at the model contraction, the so model contraction with the green one, okay. Compare with the resonance. The model weak interaction compared with the strong interaction the model decoupling compared with the, the model coupling. The model decoupling is related to DC coupling. So unless we introduce a signal to the machine side converter of the wind system, otherwise there will not be any model interaction, right? Because it is decoupled. This is a you know, you know, kind of a advantage of a power electronics device, right? It can kind of decouple the dynamics propagation of the AC system. So the focus here is still on the model coupling or AC coupling, AC coupling with uh, you know, different coupling strength, which is the three colors here. The model weak interaction normally leads to slightly, slight damping variation. So this way actually it doesn't you know, affect much on the system dynamics. The other two, which is the green color and the red color, okay, uh, the two form the foundation for the model resonance mitigation. And the purpose is to transform the model resonance, the red color, to the model contraction. Okay, so in order to prevent this one from happening, we need to transform this one to model contraction. So in a minute, I will actually introduce what the condition for both, right? And how to uh, transform from the model resonance to the model contraction. And for the model superposition concept, you can further you know, refer to our recent published paper. So then we would like to have a perceptual understanding on the different dynamic model interactions defined above. We can visualize the model coupling classification. So it becomes an area classification by fixing the system uh, critical EOM, which is the existing you know, uh, system oscillation mode, and moving the wind power system mode, FOM. The blue dashed line is a 5% damping ratio line, and hence the damping of EOM is comparatively small in this case. So we assume, you know, the, you know, the, uh, the critical, you know, UM is located here. 
So if the open loop f of m locates in the yellow area, okay, the big yellow area, the dynamic interactions between wind and grid are quite weak, okay, and can be neglected. So it's a very small impact in most cases. If the open loop f of m locates in the green area, the strong model counteraction may happen. That, you know, this counteraction will, you know, pull the critical EOM towards the left hand uh, and, uh, you know, left hand side and, uh, um, and improve, you know, the system damping. If the open loop FOM locates in the red area here, the strong model resonance may happen, which will resist and push the critical EUM towards the right-hand uh, right side you know, of the complex plane and even leads to the instability. So from this you know, diagram, you can see the location of the FOM actually will you know, uh, cause different model interaction. So the trajectory of the UM and FOM will be like this, okay? So if you can see the, you know, the, the, the arrow here, all right? So this is for the, you know, the weak interaction and they, they do not move much, right? Because there's a very little impact. And in this case is for model counteraction, right? You can see there's a, a big move. And you can see the, the UM, the system existing mode, actually you know, has a, you know, a positive, uh, I mean, impact, right? So it moved towards the left. So which means the system, uh, you know, has a, the, the damping of the system actually become better. And this case is for the negative impact, right? So the system mode actually is moving towards the right hand side. So it will, you know, could lead to the instability, right? So to further investigate the model coupling mechanism and area classification, a fabricated small system is intentionally established for the study of the interaction between the wind converter controller controller and uh, on the wind and a weak grid. The fabricated system, which is shown here, consists of a one generator subsystem, simplified version of the rest of a uh, power system. And it, it is represented by a pair of uh, conjugated system mode and one controller subsystem, which is uh, you know, a simplified version of uh, the wind controller system represented by a pair of conjugated controller mode as well. And if you look at the, the model structure carefully, you will find out that it is similar to the model used for damping torque analysis. So we have, uh, you know, PM, PC, and data here, right? Uh, which is here, right? Uh, the, the advantage of this fabricated system is that we can easily adjust uh, both uh, modes by, by regulating the model co coefficients. So based on this system, we uh, conducted the area classification of a model coupling and interaction. The second quadrant of, uh, of the complex plane is present here. As you can see, um, we enumerate, enumerate the most possible area in this part. The, the, you know, the, the damping ratio of the UM is fixed at 3%, but the frequency is changed from 0.2 Hertz to 1.0 Hertz to represent different system modes. Like previous, uh, you know, color, uh, the yellow denotes the model weak interaction, the green implies the model counteraction, while the blue, red, and the black areas represent the model resonance with different degrees. So, uh, so they are ordinary uh, model resonance uh, very strong resonance and instability, respectively. So for the 
but the blue, red, and black color. And an optimization is also conducted to determine the, the, the best model conduction we can have represented by the pink point in the uh, diagram, okay, which is here. So the same story, uh, we also use the fabricated system to mimic the same system mode, but with a different operational condition. As you can see, the frequency of the oscillation mode is fixed and the damping ratio is changing from 2% to 8%, okay? And the area classification of uh, different uh, model coupling is presented in yellow, green, blue, red, and black colors as well with different shapes. Also the best uh, uh, model uh, conduction location is determined, uh, you know, here using the, the pink, pink uh, dot. So based on the above in-depth observation, we can have some key findings on model coupling mechanisms. The first one is uh, for a specific system, the integration of controller introduced the new modes, okay, which is the, you know, the FOM, that may interact with the original mode, which is the open loop UM. With different location of open loop UM, it could be caused by different you know, frequency or damping, we just mentioned, right? The area classification of uh, open loop FOM also vary in the complex plane. The second one is the improper location of uh, the open loop FOM may induce model resonance that, uh, you know, well, you know, make negative impact on the system damping or even these two instability, which is, uh, you know, the red and the black area previously. So for fixed frequency open loop UM, the smaller the damping ratio is, the larger the green area is, which indicates the model conduction are easier to be achieved and more, and more effective in a weak damping system. That is to say, the damping improvement in a strong system is quite limited. For fixed damping ratio open loop UM, the lower the oscillation frequency is, the larger the green area is, which implies the, L, uh, the low frequency oscillation modes are more sensitive in the model resonance or in the model interaction. And the model conductions are more promising in improving the low frequency oscillation. But you can also see a, a bigger, you know, a black area, which is the instability area. So the optimal open loop FOM usually has almost the same frequency as the open loop UM and locates at the left, but not very far away, which is an important characteristic in narrowing the search resonance, uh, sorry, the search, uh, the range of the optimal control parameters. Okay. So if previously we are using a qualitative way, qualitative way to review the model interaction mechanism. So here we proposed a bilateral model shift evaluation based on the previously established two open loop subsystem model. So this is a quantitative analysis on the interaction mechanism. If you look carefully, you will find out the system model here is very similar to the fabricated system model mentioned previously, but with uh, a full representation. Um, so this is uh, from the system to the wind. So if you look at this, it's from the system to the wind system. And this is from the wind to the system, right? This is, uh, you know, from the opposite, opposite uh, direction. Uh, and via this special design, the interaction process can be explored. So, so that, that's why we call, you know, uh, this is a bilateral damping torque analysis. So for the interest of time, I will, you know, skip 
uh, the detailed calculation procedure. If you're interested, you can uh, read the paper below. Okay. And here are some uh, calculation results related to the closed loop uh, model shift evaluation on both oscillation modes. So you can see our uh, you know proposed model and calculation um, is very uh, uh, is very accurate. Okay. And valued by the eigenvalue analysis. So, based on the bilateral model shift evaluation, we further conduct the model shift sensitivity analysis to investigate the impact mechanism of system parameters on the model shift of uh, both modes. I select some analysis results display here. According to highlighted results, um, which is highlighting red, right? Uh, the, G, the GSC, which is a grid side converter, DC voltage convert, uh, controller, the GSC reactive power controller, and the PLL controller are identified to have a strong impact, you know, it's even stronger uh, you know, impact than other controllers here. So as part of the maximum analysis, an index named the resonant excitation index is also proposed according to a per unit open loop model, uh, the, the uh, distance indicating the intensity of uh, model interaction. So you can see the diagram on the bottom, at the bottom. If the REI is greater than one, okay, which is the first case, the model interaction is a repulsive. So you can see this is a, a repulsion effect, right? The larger the REI is, the stronger the repulsion effect is. So when REI is greater than two, the repulsive interaction is identified to be strong for model resonance, which leads to large model shifts of uh, UM and, uh, and FOM, right, in mutual uh, re repulsive directions. So when model resonance happens, the damping of one mode becomes better and the damping of the other becomes worse, as shown in figure, right? And thus, the overall damping performance becomes worse. And if REI is equal to one, if it's just equal to one or approximately equal to one, the oscillation model shifts are very small, which implies the model interaction are quite weak, right? So this is uh, actually represent the, the yellow color, the yellow color previously, right? And if REI is smaller than one, the closed loop modes tend to move towards each other in an attractive manner. The smaller the IEI is, the stronger the, the attraction effect is. So in this, in this uh, attraction effect, one mode becomes better, the other one becomes worse. But the overall dynamic performance is improved. Okay, so they you know, come together, so the dynamics becomes better. Some selected results of IEI analysis are presented here. It can be seen that the value of IEI can be a quantitative indicator to measure the model interaction intensity and also a qualitative indicator to reflect the system damping condition, right? Because IEI is uh, you know, directly related to the you know, the interaction, right? So it is a quantitative indicator to measure, to measure the intensity of the interaction, but it can also indir indirectly reflect the system damping condition. So it is a qualitative indicator for the system damping condition. So based on the above maximum analysis, we have proposed two main types of solutions 
to the model resonance problems brought by the wind power integration. The main idea is how to transform the you know the the, the detrimental model resonance to beneficial model counteraction, as we previously explained. The first category of solution is the model coordination strategy. It can be further divided into uh, the offline and online coordinations. For the offline model interaction optimization, the two previously developed tools are used. The IEI can be adopted as an optimization objective together with the, the mode damping ratio and the model shift sensitivity can be employed as a tool as well to indicate which wind controller and parameters are the most effective ones to adjust for the benefit of a positive model interaction. So you can see this is a test system. We test uh, the, this solution in the IEEE uh, 39 bus benchmark system. And this is the result. Um, and, and this is uh, you know, some uh, selected results. So by implementing the model um, interaction monetization, the dynamic interaction between the wind and the power grid can be reversed. In other words, the damping ratio of uh, critical system mode can be raised with the increasing active power injection of the wind. The wind participation level in the system mode is also examined. It can be noted that the power injection of the wind may play as a quasi amplifier that magnifies the dynamic interaction, although it is not strictly linear. The closed loop power system is a you know, multi input and multi output system. The singular value response, right? This singular value uh, response of the power system is uh, illustrated here to assess the system uh, frequency domain response. Here we main focus on the uh, the low frequency domain, uh, holding uh, from the 0.2 hertz to uh, 2 hertz uh, is plotted with the, the PMSG power injection. Uh, PW equal to 1.5 per unit. Strong resonance condition, uh, the highest peak has been observed at the frequency, you know, uh, here, okay. Um, while in the optimized interaction condition, the critical oscillation peak at the frequency is uh, 3.07, um, the radian, Percent is the lowest with, uh, uh, you know, the the lowest uh, mag uh, magnitude. So this actually indicates the critical EOM is well damped. At the same time, it can be found that the other local modes can also be benefited. Um, so these findings indicate uh, proves the that the optimized interaction do not deteriorate other system modes, right? So here presents some uh, the time to simulation result, which uh, align with uh, uh, the uh, the previous uh, the frequency domain analysis. So the second one is the online optimization or coordination strategy. So although the offline model interaction optimization is quite effective, it also encounters some disadvantages. For example, like uh, uh, it is highly you know, model dependent, right? And uh, the second one is the low model availability. So for a lot of cases, right, uh, we do not know uh, the, the wind you know, system model due to some you know, commercial uh, in a, in a commercially and uh, confidential uh, factors, or uh, the the wind farm, you know, the model actually is changing right all the time due to 
uh, for example, if they apply the sliding mode control, so the, all the parameters are actually are changing. And also, um, the previous the, the offline optimization is based on one um, typical system operational uh, point, okay, operating point. So um, the operational ch condition actually changes a lot. You know, the system is quite nonlinear. So the one, you know, single point solution, right, it cannot, uh, you know, ensure uh, the system is, you know, uh, the robust or uh, stable, right, for a range of uh, operational conditions. So it is less robust. So in contrast, the online model currently has some you know, notable merits. For example, it is uh, simple, right? No need to change the model, uh, change the control configuration or install extra controllers. And no need to acquire the detailed model of the power grid. Um, and this one actually is, uh, is quite you know, uh, practical, right? So for a wind farm, uh, they normally do not have the model of the power system, right? So they only have the model of the probably themselves, right? And also uh, adapt adaptability, right? It can, uh, comes in model random with different oscillation frequencies, right? So it could apply to low frequency oscillation, right? Or uh, or, or sub or sub synchronous uh, synchronous oscillation right? issues. It can also respond more proactively to operational condition change, as I just uh, did, and uh, it is uh, you know more adaptive you know to different operational condition and system uncertainty. So uh, for more detail, you can refer to uh, the paper below. So the online model coordination strategy is mainly applied to damp the resonance related, related oscillations as the res resonance should be uh, partially attributed to the wind generation integration. However, the strategy can also be applied to suppress other oscillations as long as the wind generation has demonstrated a strong participation and the controllability in the anxious oscillation mode. We adopted uh, a, ma a mature mode identification technique. So due to the time constraint, uh, I probably will uh, skip this part. And this to uh, verify if the critical mode has been accurately identified. So both frequency and time domain validation have been conducted here. You can see the identification performance is, is quite quite good, right? So the plot, uh, the plot uh, demonstrates the comparison between the impact of different uh, model coordination strategies, considering increasing uh, level of wind power. In the base case, with no model coordination strategy employed, the increasing wind power penetration uh, aggravates system damping condition and pushes the entire system to the unstable region. With two model coordination strategies implemented, the detrimental model resonance is eliminated and replaced with a, a, con, a, conduct, a conducive um, model counteraction, which uh, enhances the system damping and guarantees that the system always stays in a stable region. Meanwhile, um, it is, you know, it, can be noted that the online model coordination strategy uh, possess a better overall damping performance, especially in low wind power penetration conditions. And this is because the online model or coordination strategy can flexibly detect the external variation and change the controller parameter timely, uh, whereas with uh, the offline model co or coordination strategy, uh, um, wind generation are with a fixed controller uh, parameters based on the optimization in a specific 
uh, operating condition. And hence, it cannot adapt to the change of operating condition of the system. The participation factor of the wind in the system mode are compared um, among different model coordination strategies. In the base case, the wind has a, a large participation factor, so about 50%, as you can see here, and significantly influence, influence the, the critical mode due to the triggering of the model resonance, which in turn dramatically degra uh, deg uh, degrades the system uh, damping. With the fixed optimal parameters in wind obtained by off, uh, offline model coordination strategy in a specific uh, condition, um, the participation factor turns to be nearly ne linear with the wind power injection level. This indicates that large wind power injection contributes better damping enhancement. While the low wind power penetration has a limited contribution, however, with the, the online model coordination strategy, you can see the participation level of wind cannot only stay at a relative high level, around 30%, to affect the critical mode, but also in the manner of uh, model counteraction that induces the beneficial interaction. So the online model coordination strategy is more adaptive, adaptive and can achieve uh, the damping enhancement with respect to various operational conditions. To have a, a thorough comparison uh, between the two model coordination strategies, a low penetration level is carefully uh, examined here. Uh, so with the PW, uh, which is the wind power, equal to 0.5 per unit. With the offline uh, mod, uh, model coordination strategy employed, the wind only has a uh, you know, 3.5, 3.05 percent um, participation level, while with the, the online model coordination strategy, uh, wind can have a high of uh, 28 percent of participation level. So the eigenvalue shifts of the open loop uh, critical mode and closed loop uh, critical mode with respect to different model coordination strategy are also compared. In the base case, it's much larger than one indicating that the strong model resonance occurs and uh, you know, the, the damping becomes worse. With the offline uh, model coordination strategy, the IEI is significantly reduced to less than one, right? So as previously uh, you know, um, introduced, so the system damping becomes uh, you know, better, right? Um, and the, the II uh, is much less than one, manifesting uh, the permanent model counteraction executes a significant, significant shift on the critical mode toward the left hand side. Uh, not only the model resonance is uh, circumvented, but also the system damping is improved uh, you know, at the same time. So here's the, the time to simulation to validate the frequency analysis. So the second solution is so-called additional control method. And for this one, we impose advanced control strategies or install auxiliary controllers to improve the dynamics performance of the wind power system. And the process of uh, damping any you know, resonance or oscillation is to uh, generate or absorb energy to or from a grid. In order to achieve this, we need to have, firstly, uh, the inertial source, which can inject or absorb energy into or from the grid. Secondly, we need to have a properly designed dynamics of uh, the inertial resources via the external controller to Act, actively involve the inertial source. Right? So, this, so these two are the two basic uh, um, condition right, we should have for this uh, uh, auxiliary you know, uh, control. 
so as we believe it is part of the wind farm's responsibility uh, you know, to solve the resonance issues during their integration to the grid. So in our research, we comprehensively explore different options to install the auxiliary controllers on the wind generation system. The method is to seek the possible installation locations is quite straightforward. We mainly look at where there is an inertia source. So in total, we identify three possible installation locations, um, including the wind turbine on the left-hand side, right? Uh, this, uh, this is uh, related to the rotor inertia. This is a phys physical inertia, right? Uh, and the DC capacitor, right, can be treated as uh, another inertia as well. So this one actually, it is uh, you know, elect electrostatic inertia, right, compared with the physical inertia of the rotor. And the PLL is a virtual inertia, which can utilize the whole wind generation as an energy storage. So we have these three um, uh, you know, inertia source to be explored. And we adopt a generic structure for the auxiliary uh, resonance uh, controller. And we use the IEI proposed previously and the eigenvalue uh, real part as the objective to optimize the, 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 you know, the uh, auxiliary resonance controller parameter. So, so this is the base case results for comparison purpose. Uh, as you can see, when the wind penetration level goes high, the damping is significantly reduced and the II value becomes greater, which, which uh, indicates that there is an excited model resonance. So by zooming in the graph, we can see the detrimental model shifts with the increasing wind model, uh, wind power. Sorry. So the higher power injection from the wind power system in model resonance conditions result in worse damping of the system and alarming the, the degradation of the oscillation stability, as you can see here, right? And different, different ARC, the auxiliary uh, resonance controller, are affecting the dynamics of uh, different parts of the wind generation system and has different wind modes, as you can see here from this, this table, right? So they are affecting different um, the wind uh, modes, right? So this is the, you know, the, uh, the plot of the model shifts of interactive modes as before, right? And with the, the model contraction between the, you know, the FOM and the UM, the better damping performance can be achieved with more power injection into the parts as reflected by the time to simulation here. And this is the model resonance analysis, right, on the frequency domain. Um, and this one actually is uh, referred referred to uh, refers to the the DC link auxiliary resonance controller, and it, it is main, mainly affects the DC capacitor mode. And for the DC, uh, you know, ARC, it is related to uh, relatively uh, stable in terms of uh, suppressing the existing system mode when power injection changes. So um, this is also confirmed by the you know hardly changed uh, participation factor of uh, of the FOM. And the last one is the PLL ARC. It mainly affects the PL mode. So 
So you can also see the model shifts of interactive uh, modes. So if you compare, you know, the model shift of uh, you know uh, of the modes caused by different uh, ARC, you can see uh, some similarity, right? So they can all benefit the system modes and the FOM. Uh, but later, I will actually explain or compare the difference be, uh, among the three ARC. So this is the time domain simulation results, which uh, is uh, in, a, in uh, which are in the, in, in line with uh, the previously uh, demonstrated frequency domain analysis. Okay, here comes to the. Uh, the main part of the comparison. So we have proposed three you know, different ARC, right? So to fully evaluate the performance of the, the three ARCs, both externally and internally, four key criteria are selected for comparison. Okay, you can see uh, in the table, there are four key areas. The first one is the resonance suppression. It represents the ARC impact on the model resonance suppression for external power systems. Okay, so this is the impact of uh, uh, for, uh, impact on the external system. The second one is uh, the the wind power output stat steadiness. Okay, it denotes the the active power consistency of the wind. Okay, during the function of of the ARC. The third one is the rotor speed steadiness. It reflects the ARC impact on the wind turbine rotor, uh, which is the kinetic inertial source, right? The fourth uh, criteria is the DC link voltage um, steadiness. It represents the ARC influence on the DC capacitor, right, which is the electrostatic inertial source. The three levels uh, to evaluate the effectiveness of ARCs are proposed with uh, you know, you know, three um, star, three asterisk or stars, two stars and uh, one, one star stars. And uh, they represent the best, middle and the worst performance of a specific uh, criteria. So you can see uh, for the resonance suppression, the the wind turbine ARC is the best, right? It's the best. And for the uh, you know the power output steadiness, the PL is the best because it is kind of an overall you know adjustment. For the wind turbine rotor speed steadiness, you can see the wind turbine ARC has the the worst impact, right? Because the wind turbine ARC. Uh, actually, you know, uh, rely on the the wind turbine in a rotor inertial, right? So, it causes the, the rotor speed change frequently. And DC link voltage steadiness, uh, you can see the middle one, the DC ARC actually is worst because it is utilizing the the you know the DC capacitor to absorb right and inject uh, you know the energy to the system in order to uh, to you know make the uh, the constructive uh, impact on system mode, so you can see it is the worst in terms of DC link voltage steadiness. So overall, if we add up all the you know uh, the asterisk or stars to uh, uh, together, right? So you can see the PL ARC is with the overall uh, best performance. Uh, the simulation results are on the right hand side, also validated the assessment table. And uh, this is also a key part right, uh, for, for our work. So, based on the comp uh, comprehensive comparison between different ARC options, uh, we summarized uh, the advantage and disadvantage of each ARC here. And uh, finally, provides the system and a wind farm operator right, with important suggestions on the application condition of different ARC. Right. So, for the first type of uh, ARC, the wind tur turbine ARC, it introduces inertial energy 
and uh, dynamics of wind turbine uh, rotor to the power, power grid. It provides high energy comp uh, compensation, effective uh, in damping mod model uh, resonance. Uh, but it might cause less wind power harvest, right? And also uh, potential MSC oscillation mode introduced. Um, so the suggested application condition for this uh, you know, wind turbine NRC is, is during high wind penetration level. One system will require, you know, for, uh, you know, the inertial support uh, to enhance, especially, you know, to enhance the transient and frequency stability. In this case, we can use this wind turbine uh, ARC. And for the DC capacitor uh, ARC, it, 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 because, you know, the, capac the capacity actually is not that uh, big, right? Because the capacitor has a limited capacity. So it can be used, uh, you know, during uh, not very high wind penetration, right? Comparatively, uh, the large DC capacitor, right? Uh, and uh, it is, you know, applicable to higher frequency resonance with a short period, you know, uh, considering the characteristic of uh, uh, the capacitor, right? Because it it actually, uh, you know, respond respond quickly, okay, more quickly. And for the PL ARC, it is you know uh, suggest to be you know applied during high wind penetration as well. Um, so especially you know when each you know uh, the uh, ARC or the initial uh, component has a limited uh, capacity or capability. So we can sort of, you know, uh, use the overall adjustment by using the, the PLR ARC. And also, you know, for PLR, PLR IRC, it can maximize the DC capacitor lifespan as we previously, you know, uh, compared, right? Because it is the, you know, the least frequent, you know, uh, ARC to utilize the DC capacitor to you know to uh, to prevent this model resonance, so it can maximize the lifespan of the DC capacitor. The last but not least, uh, I would like to share some recent interest interesting findings. Okay, based on the study of uh, strong model resonance, uh, strong model interaction, as we discussed a lot today. And I call this phenomenon dynamics uh, transition. Okay, dynamics transition. In the traditional dynamic study, it is believed that the converter inter interface generation CRG uh, would be firstly decoupled from the grid and also an ideal power or current source. Right? So previously we are in the in a in a traditional uh, you know thought right we, we we regard the power electronics converter as the you know decoupled uh, component and also an ideal power or converter source and hence the cig rarely participate in the system electromechanical dynamics until many recent studies on the strong interaction or model resonance as we explained today although this uh, interactions do not happen very often, they would lead to severe uh, consequences. Okay, so in this study, we exclusively look at how the strong interaction between wind and a power grid will change the characteristic of the system electromechanical mode. In order to achieve this target, we proposed a few indexes. The first one is the traditional electromechanical loop correlations ratio. We call we call it ELCR, right? So which uh, this one is used to determine if any system mode is an electromechanical mode or not, right? If you if you know the you know stability or oscillation stability, but uh, uh, you you should know this, right? This ELCR ratio. The other two are derived based on the concept of the traditional ELCR. So they are derived 
based on this ELCR, which categorize the dynamics of uh, the wind penetrative power system. The second index, which is uh, in, in the middle, uh, mainly looks at the proportion of wind generation system dynamics. If the FDCR, so-called FDCR, is greater than one, normally we believe it is strongly associated with the wind generation system. The interesting thing is that if we compare the comparison of the first and the second indexes, uh, if we have the FDCR greater than one, the ELCR would be most pr probably less than one, right? Because the one become you know a bigger proportion, the other one become a less proportion. Then in this case, the original electromechanical mode is transit to a wind mode, right? In this case, or a so-called the quasi electromechanical mode in our study. So that is why we further define the third index and added the oscillation associated state variable components of wind generation system to the index. So their dynamics are similar to the electromechanical state variables of a single generator. Like, uh, as I said, said, the data and the omega, right, the two electromechanical state variable of the synchronous generator. And we used the previously illustrated four machine uh, two area system as an example. So uh, these are the initial study uh, result. The wind penetration level is set at a zero for comparison purpose. So this is the base case. And we set up 14 different scenarios with uh, different um, controller parameters designed in order to generate the strong model interactions. Also, when we're talking about the wind power integration, normally we have two ways, as you may know. The first one is gradually replacing the synchronous generator, right? which means most of the time, the synchronous generator are still there. You are just replacing the synchronous generator. The second one is to replace the synchronous generator with the wind farm of the same capacity, right, in order to you know, feed the load. So these two you know, modes are the two normal ways right, to replace the synchronous generator. So we look, look at both case, cases. So here is one of the selected NS results. So you can see the ELCR may increase or decrease, right, on the different scenarios. However, for this scenario 10, which is uh, uh, the, the blue color, the blue color here, okay, the ELCR consistently decreased to below one. So this actually indicates that the UM is not a typical EOM anymore, right? Because the ELCR ratio has become less than one. So normally, you know, traditionally, we don't regard this one as an electromechanical mode, right? And it become dominated by the, uh, you know, the, the wind or power electronics devices, right? So the FDCR in uh, the scenario 10 can go beyond one at uh, 86, 86 percent of penetration level, which also indicated this oscillation mode previously identified to be the UM, right? Now become a quasi UM. So it is not a traditionally you know, defined UM anymore. So here we all uh, we also look at the, you know to replace the S, uh, the synchronous generator with uh, the um, the FCWG the wind power generation. The previous we look at uh, you know to re gradually replace right. So this one is just uh, you know replace synchronous generator uh, number one right with the wind generation with the same with the same capacity. Um, so we look at you know in 
in uh, two conditions. The firstly, uh, the first one is the strong interaction. The second one is the weak interaction. So let's look at the, you know, the weak, weak interaction first. So in the weak interaction condition, uh, we, we found you know a local EOM closely related to the synchronous generator one disappeared, right? So th this is a uh, quite you know, obvious, right? Straightforward because we already replaced the synchronous generator one. So the the you know the EOM related to the synchronous generator one disappeared. And there are only two UM left in the system because this is a you know a, a four machine two error system. So you used to have three UMs, right? After one disappear, so you still have two remaining UMs. Uh, and these two UMs are you know one local UM, right, associated with the SG three and SG four in the area two, and the and also an inter area UM in which the the remaining three SGs participate. So in this case, for the weak interaction, the wind power system has a very limited participation in these modes. So now let's look at the strong interaction. So for the strong interaction, uh, there are two uh, quasi-electromechanical uh, the wind power system state variables. Uh, uh, they they play um, they act as the you know electromechanical oscillatory loop through with the state variables of the replaced SG one. So, uh, because it because the wind power system replaced the synchronous generator, right? So, uh, the two you know quasi you know electromechanical uh, state variable of the wind power system you know, actually play the same role, um, you know, as the you know the data data and the data omega of the synchronous generator, you know, one before the local mode four and the inter area mode three remain. Right, so these two uh, they do not change, but uh, since it is a strong interaction, the FCWG has a significant participation uh, in mode three due to the active interaction between the wind power generation and uh, the you know, the existing of the rest of the system. The two quasi UM mode one and mode two are introduced. The mode one can be regarded as a local Quasi UM, since it is mainly dominated by SG2 and uh, and the wind power generation, the mode two is largely um, you know a wind power related to uh, oscillation mode. Uh, various uh, all three SGs participate actively in this mode, and hence it can be also be recognized as an inter area quasi UM. So here I, I list some you know uh, very important findings. The f the first one is uh, the condition uh, for model strong uh, interactions. So uh, first we we look at uh, we summarize in what kind of condition we will have this model strong interaction, right? So we find out the degree of the model interaction is in, is impacted by you know two you know, aspects. The first one is the penetration level of the wind generation. If the wind generation with a very small you know, power output, uh, so it can be you know, uh, you know, very obviously, right? Um, the wind actually has a very small limited impact on this because the wind output in the power is uh, limited, right? The second aspect is the distance is distance between the two affected oscillation mode, right? So, if you have uh, two oscillation mode, the I mean the location, the open loop modes, right? If they are very distant from each other, so you would not have any model interaction, strong interaction. So, the strong interaction is more likely to occur at a high penetration level of wind generation. With the frequency of the FOM within the oscillation frequency range of EUM. So when we look at the, the location of the UM the FOM, we are more, you know, actually uh, focus on the focusing on the, the frequency, okay, rather than the damping. So if they have a, a similar frequency, there are a high possibility to to you know to uh, stimulate 
a strong interaction. So the second one, we would like to look at the condition for quasi-electromechanical dynamics. So what is the condition to have this quasi-electromechanical dynamics? It's only after the model strong interaction happens. Okay, so we'll have this quasi-electromechanical uh, dynamics. So if the, if the strong interaction happens and the FDCR, which is the, our previously defined the, the ratio, right, of the EUM increase above one, in this case, the traditional, a classic, a class, uh, the classic, you know, ELCR, the ratio of the UM would most probably drop below one. So this indicates this UM is no longer uh, a, an electromechanical dynamics dominant and thus transform into a quasi UM. So what is, is the key factor to, you know, to impact the dynamics transformation? Um, so the different FOM also with the different the controller may interact with the, you know, the existing you know, UM. For the same, the uh, wind power uh, controller, the integral parameters, which is I, right, the Ki, plays a key role in determining the oscillation frequency. So if you have a try on the, you know, to tune the you know, wind farm you know, controller, you find out actually the integral uh, and the parameter actually affect the frequency of the oscillation mode. But the, the, the gain, right, the proportion uh, parameter actually affect the, uh, the damping more, okay, the damping of the oscillation. So this uh, integral parameter actually affect the participation of the FCWG in the electromechanical dynamics. So it become, becomes uh, the key factor for dynamic transformation. In other words, if we would like to have this, you know, uh, to, uh, to have, uh, to make this dynamics transformation happen, we need to further tune or further adjust the integral parameter of the wind uh, power controller. And the fourth one is number of the state variables of the quasi UM, right? So in the case of, uh, of the strong interaction, the integration of the uh, the wind power introduce two new quasi UM, which closely relate to the both system uh, electromechanical dynamics and the FC, uh, F the, of the wind dynamics. The two quasi electromechanical state variables of uh, the wind act as the electro oscillation loop associated with uh, state variables of the conventional synchronous generator. So, uh, so uh, effectively, uh, they are the data and omega right, of, of the rotor. So in terms of, uh, uh, in the condition of the generation replacement, right, the second, uh, you know, the replacement um, uh, way, the replacement of an SG, uh, synchronous generator with uh, the, the wind power significantly affects the system electromechanical dynamics. So due to the, you know, the replacement of the synchronous generator, the local EOM, Related to this, associated with this, you uh, know, general will disappear, right? Obviously, um, but there, there, there are two new local, you know, quasi UM will be, you know, produced or generated uh, in a strong uh, interaction, right? So in the in a weak, you know, uh, model interaction, there's, uh, you know, uh, no, you know, new local quasi um generator. But during the strong interaction, uh, there will be two new uh, local quasi um generator. So one is uh, associated with uh, both uh, the generator two and uh, the wind power. The other one actually is an area, inter-area oscillation mode, right? But it's with, uh, with uh, you know, the preservation of uh, all of the general machine, uh, synchronous machines, right, in the system. So, uh, for fur so further details, for more details, you can refer to our recent published paper below. Okay. Okay. So this is pretty much I would like to share with you today, uh, and with this I conclude my presentation. Uh, thank you for your uh, your listening.
and uh, your questions are very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your informative session on stability analysis and operation control of parallelized power systems. You gave a clear insight on model resonance in power systems caused by wind generation integration, its causes and effects, and various solution methods. Different model counteraction strategies like offline model optimization, online model coordination, and additional control strategy using auxiliary resonance control are also discussed. Thank you, sir. The session is now open for discussion. I would now read out the queries posted by the participants. Uh, there are two queries. Uh, the first query is uh, from Dr. Vivek Mohan. Uh, to my understanding, power system loading affects both electromechanical os oscillations and multi-machine oscillations. How can we reduce the interactions between these two oscillatory modes for drastic variation of loads? For example, fault. Um, I think uh, there's some uh, concept I should clarify here. Um, so the oscillation, especially you know, for the new um, uh, type, new types of uh, of the uh, of the stability issue we we talk about today, right? So they are not related to the system fault. So there are many related to actually related to could it be either the series compensation or the uh, the interpret uh, setting of the you know, power, power electronics converter. So they are the main, you know, the, the drivers, you know, for those um, for those um, instability issues. Okay, uh, for the emerging instability issues. Uh, but uh, the fault could be a trigger, right? So if you have a fault, then uh, you might trigger the oscillation. But uh, but the fault is not the uh, the main causes, I should say. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Dr. Mohan just uh, raised a very good question related to the, the loading, right? The loading change. Um, actually, if we look back, you know, probably to the, the beginning. Hmm, not this one. I, I I emphasize here why we uh, we have this kind of motivation to adjust the wind instead of uh, you know the system in order to prevent this uh, you know model resonance from happening. So uh, we think you know the the wind uh, you know the, the model resonance actually is essentially you know caused by the wind power gen generation integration. So uh, it it also actually affect the you know, dynamic performance of the wind. So that's why the, the wind farm, the operator has the responsibility to adjust their you know, parameters uh, to prevent this from happening. And also, uh, you might know it is uh, for the system, you know, existing oscillation, it might be difficult actually to, to change, right? So that's why we, uh, we try to, you know, to modify uh, the, or to adjust the wind, wind generation uh, to prevent this uh, model resin from happening. Um, so, in terms of the load fluctuation, uh, we are trying to, you know, to make our you know, solution more robust, which means it should be more adaptive to the, you know, to the uh, system you know, load change. So that's why we introduced uh, the online right, uh, coordination strategy in order to, you know, to, uh, to tackle the system you know, the load changing. Uh, then and to provide, uh, you know, this uh, model counteraction effect, right, uh, for the for a range of uh, system operating conditions. Um, yeah, I hope I answered this question. Okay, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, is, uh, sir, one question. minute, sir. Can I can I uh, have a continuation of that question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Please yeah, go ahead. yeah. Uh, sir. Uh, I think uh, it's not relevant whether the triggering incident is a fault or loading. It only, mm -hmm. I mean, the monitoring, uh, as the monitoring is real time, uh, we only see the change in uh, delta del, right? 
Uh, you mean uh, you mean the online, right? The online one. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Please. Uh, actually, we are. Um, you you could uh, actually look at the voltage or like the the online like the power, right? So or the uh, voltage angle, something. Yeah, you could monitor uh, as yeah, the yeah. kind of uh, yeah the measurement for the uh, for the further analysis. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. No problem. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is uh, one more query uh, from Mr. Rajesh. Um, in the state models, we have considered linear state models, but our practical systems are non-linear systems. So how will we correlate these models for practical systems? Okay, yeah, I think that uh, this is a, another uh, good question. Um, so, yeah, I should say uh, this kind of, uh, you know, linearization cannot solve uh, the, you know, the non very strong non-linearity you know, issues, but uh, you know with the context of uh, of the new newly introduced you know the stability issues, actually they are they can be solved you know in a linearized uh, you know manner. So um, you can just un understand this way you know for the traditional you know oscillation right and you know among you know different synchronous generator, so we can use uh, you know the linearization uh, technique, right? To uh, to linearize the system on a specific, right? On a specific, um, you know, operating point, right? And then we do some analysis, and then we say, oh, uh, you know, under this specific you know, operating condition, uh, this um, uh, system actually is uh, kind of immune, right? To to this oscillation uh, stability issue, right? And then uh, what you tend to do is you tend to uh, to kind of to make your controller design or PSS right more robust. So what you do is you tend to use other um, you know other um, condition right to 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 validate your design right. So uh, if uh, other condition uh, can be uh, effectively you know uh, tackled right. So it means your design is um is effective right it's robust so i think uh the same idea can be you know uh, actually uh extend to uh to this uh, context uh, in terms of the new uh oscillation stability so we start from this um from one particular you know operating point and we linearize this system and we look at the mechanism uh, because you know uh for the nonlinear uh, RT and analysis, right? And the most, um, the common way is to use the time domain simulation. But by using the time domain simulation, actually, we uh, it it is difficult for us to you know, to to explore the 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 damping mechanism, you know, behind. So that's why we need to use the you know you know the model and uh, to use the you know bilateral damping talk analysis to look at the you know the the mechanism. Then based on this, you know, the, the impact, the damping impact uh, mechanism, we can uh, design the controller, right? So uh, the, the same story, in order to, you know, to, uh, to make the design, you know, controller design more effective or robust in a, a nonlinear, you know, system, real system, we need to, you know, to further validate, you know, in different operational, operational conditions. Um, but for the online one, actually, it is like uh, you know, uh, you know, a long uh, online, you know, changing, uh, you know, uh, parameters. Uh, um, so, so for that one, actually, it can you know can can be adapt adaptive, you know, to different operational conditions. Um, but uh, uh, back to in general, okay, for the oscillation stability, it is uh, um, it can be you know can be analyzed in a linearized way. I think this is a uh, the main kind of a, a proof or like the uh, the cornerstone for, for us, right? So if you're talking about like transient stability, we cannot use the linearized anyway, right? So uh, because it at all, it is just uh, you know a non uh, a big you know, disturbance and problem. But for the small signal uh, you know uh, stability issue or oscillation stability issue, it is uh, like uh, to do with uh, the system, you know. Um, own stability. It, uh, it's not really to the fault itself. Okay, it's not really to the size of fault or you know the location of fault. 
it is related to the system characteristics. So with this, you know, uh, in this connection, we can use the linearized way, you know, to look at the, you know, the small signal stability and oscillation stability, as well as the, the newly introduced, uh, you know, type of uh, uh, the stability issues. Yeah, thank you. Yes, and that's, uh, those are the queries. So thank you, sir. So I thank our speaker, Dr. Sekibu, and participants for making the session interactive. We will join uh, back at 2.30. Sorry, sorry just, just now. Can I just uh, yes. make another comment? Okay. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so today, uh, probably uh, what I present here is, uh, is related to the transmission grid, right? But uh, actually this kind of study or phenomenon can be also, you know, extend to the distribution, right? So, uh, although we look at the wind power, but uh, actually for, no matter for, you know, for solar or for wind, as long as the uh, probably electronic you know, converter interface system, they all have this kind of you know, model resonant issue. So this study is actually can be extended to, you know, various of uh, aspects. So not just a limit to transmission grid, not just a limit to wind power. That's my supplement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. No problem. It's my yeah. uh, great pleasure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your attendance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we will join back at uh, two thirty p.m. for the fourth session by Dr. Vivek Mohan. Thank you all. <laughs>